What is up, YouTube, and welcome back to another episode of RimWorld. And sounds back. Fantastic. Okay, so... The center one is currently making uh, the uranium pellets and uranium rods for our nuclear reactor, our second one. The first one's still, obviously, mortars. And this one is making the upgrades for the Rimatronics defense buildings and the like. Specifically for the marauders that we are yet to see, but we'll see in action very short. Action? Action. I don't know what I said then. Action. Anyway, very shortly. Wave 58 was actually completed. 429. Uh, you can see there the Teslas are going up in a level. The max level that they can go to and all of the Rimatronics defense things is, I th I'm not sure, it's about 100 kills and it gives them a 10% cooldown reduction. That is where it caps. It does not go any higher than that. Of course, it counts the kills higher than that, but there are no actual buffs. I was hoping it'd go like, start building damage uh, when it gets to like two, three hundreds, but it doesn't appear to be the case. You can see here, this is the automated corpse picker upper up. Takes the corpses from the kill box, puts them into the cemetery. The cemetery then automatically cremates the corpses, dropping the clothes that go into the smelter at the bottom there. And that then cremates or burns the clothes. Automation is a fantastic thing. And we are certainly on board with that now. Changes to come, of course, because it's not as quick as I'd want it to be. But while we've got plenty of time, these issues where we get, and I say issue, I'm not sure if it's an issue, but there's one person missing on the counter, um, and it looks like maybe it's just triggered, actually. That person doesn't exist. I don't know where they went or where they're missing. Normally, you get like one or two missing, and it just gives you a time. But that time means that you get additional waiting. Now we've got wave 59 timed it in. 401 to come in on that one. And again, remember that I will reduce the amount of people when it starts lagging. But of course, it will be using the compression mod so that less people is definitely not easier. In fact, it could be a lot harder. I got them in the Colossals to get some of the blue gel so that we can look at the blue gel batteries if we need them in the future. The blue, dra blue gel batteries and hex gel batteries are expensive but quite efficient but require the hexagel from those animals and of course sky steel as well. Seems to be working. Clears them up, saves my guys from having to carry them and also means that then the debuffs, the mood debuffs are not as bad. Also, from the Anomalies mod, uh, I realized that the floor that you get, the bio site floor that you get, that, that sort of cream looking stuff that's now on the floor, increases the potential for harboring and capturing and holding your critters. The inhibitor that I'm looking at now, it's electric, also increases by 10. You can have a maximum of five or six of those per containment. The things that I've got down already that there's four of, you can only allow one of them, which is why I'm deconstructing them. So the containment for this lion, pink lion looking thing is 70, I believe, but we can easily get that up to 100 or so, which means he'll never be able to escape. The door as well matters, or having a door matters, and the door being closed is sufficient. That one there is currently left open in the bottom left where them uh, arrows are. That matters because it's classed as the room. So closing the door using the tiles produced by that mod itself from the anomalies and the inhibitors all mean that your inhibited creatures cannot escape. Most of the pipes and control panels etc are in place now for the second reactor but we still require the rods add-in so you can see I'm adding nine there's the tenth rod added Starting from the center, because of course that means that they uh, get hotter, produce more power. On alpha, so the first one we put in, you can see the nine in the center have gone green. That is showing you that they are starting to over 
produce the plutonium, uh, not the uranium that they're originally built from. That means that they are reduced in terms of power. So if you are looking at your reactor, of course, as soon as you start it, it will give you an amount of power produced. It will only drop from that point. It will never go up. It will only drop. When they're showing as green, that's a good time to take them out and shut them through a plutonium reprocessor to turn them into plutonium. And then, of course, the MOX fuel rods that are much more efficient and powerful than the standard uranium fuel rods. Pushed out a little bit to the left here where the coolers are and of course the farms are for a bit more space, likely for silos for the nuclear rockets I'm going to be making to nuke things, people, uh, and maybe ourselves. Wink, wink. Anyway, um, yeah, so just pulling a bit more side. You can see I'm using Plastisil now. I've got plenty of it. 5k Plastisil, so I'm starting to make the hour towards Plastisil. Plastisil? Plastil. How do you say it? It's Plastil, right? Plas... Steel. Yeah. Um, and then just using the sweeper there to clean up some of the stones and metal slag that's all over the base that's then auto-processed into cut stone and steel. Boulder mitt there. Not really any use, I don't believe, for farming them. No, no point attacking them either. Plus, their HP is is stupid uh, high, so it'll take forever. And they'll just run away, in most cases. And finally now, both of the reactors are up and running. The turbine's running at 100%. Technically means we need another turbine. Uh, but making the turbine blades is annoying as hell, so I'm not going to do that just yet when we do we'll probably do two turbines per reactor so we would need four there still though the cooling towers are more than capable of managing the setup that we have now with ample ample uh, power our ppcs or the batteries for the defensive weapons are online and should stay online regardless of how big the waves that come are I hope. I am removing the ability to butcher the humans mainly because uh, I've learnt it on that machine and I'm going to try and automate it but if we get enough food honestly it'll be easier just to can them. The cemetery at the minute is there's no corpses there if you look it's actually just clothes and shield belts that are being destroyed but it's slow it's really really slow. So I need to look at a faster solution for that in the future or just another way altogether or maybe try and I could technically chuck them all into the shuttle things and send them to people as a gift. Hmm. We'll see. Let's see what this automation gives us when it's built. It's a bit slow. Uh, the robots are taking away the clothes to take elsewhere because I've obviously missed set up a storage facility at the minute so I need to solve that one. So I've set something up. The idea is that it'll auto cremate then throw that human meat into storage and then uh, we basically get food forever as long as we make sure we continue to grow a vegetable of some description but we've got like 20,000 sweet corn so I'm not worried so at the minute the meals are fine meals using human meat and sweet corn obviously that's disgusting but it's what our guys are into so that's what we do there are some spuds potatoes or tatties whatever you want to call them as well but I think I'm switching to mainly corn because it's a much better nourished food and it just takes longer to grow but that isn't an issue with the amount of food we have though I do need to get some shelves or a steel there we go I'm already ahead of myself so put in a steel chest there steel crate that will be for the food to go in so that it will stack up nicely and not take up all of that floor space in our giant freezer but we will need to wait for a wave to hit to see if that automation is working as expected Wave 59 coming in, 35,000 
points on the raid. Uh, there, there, there has been a reasonable amount of time between because they was waiting for ages. Uh, what I'm actually doing now is paying attention to see if we can get one of these marauders to fire up. They do require somebody to man the sack, the uh, terminal up there in the top, as you can see. So we have plenty of turrets, plenty of obelisks all upgraded and then there is the testers as well okay let's show you the marauders there sound warning ouch yeah that of hurt they they like I don't know sort of machine gun grenade launcher type things they're loud but they're effective now what I'm actually doing is I am not using them all the time so they're not on the rotor as a defense they are in case of emergencies I let the uh, guys do their job I let the obelisks and the testers do their job along with the sniper turrets that still exist just because um, and if they get too close, I will use them. Now, what I will find, and what you will find, is that if you have a person, i.e. one of your colonists, in between it and the enemy, they can get hit. Um, there we go again. Now, they're not so good on single target, or they are, but it's a bit of a waste. The amount of power they use from your PPCs is insane. Uh, each shot from one of those marauders is probably about 50 shots from one of your obelisks uh, and in turn probably about 8 to 100 shots from your testers so be warned they will use a lot of power although their AOE is insanely strong uh, and they are good at what they do for now anyway you can see the enemies scattered all over the place uh, and it's a little bit laggy obviously 400 of them uh, my guys are struggling you will notice Booker is dead Booker second there on the list he actually died at the beginning of this raid because he was out and got basically uh, the, the raid landed on him I didn't pull my guys back or pay attention to where they were in their assignments to where they were allowed to go before the raid hit and that was my fault but obviously he shouldn't have been out there he's an idiot. I told him to run he tried, uh, then decided to fight because, again, I forgot to set. Do not fire at will. And, yeah, he, got, he just got beat to death. It's it's harsh, but it is what it is. I may stick him in the freezer. I may not. It depends. Uh, resurrection serums haven't been found as yet. Uh, so I am not likely to bother. To be honest, resurrection serums, I'm likely to only save them for the main character, which is Pex. And any members that exist, which currently is only Joanne, obviously, in here. So they're the only two that I'll likely use Resurrection Serums on because they are so rare. The rest of them, if they get caught out with their pants down, they'll have to reap the consequences themselves. Now everybody is running. There's still a lot of people to shoot at and cause issues with. But of course, I, my characters, can start putting out fires and leave the machines to do the work. I'm not seeing that the auto cremator thing is working as intended at the minute. But I'm not too worried because, of course, we do have lots of other uh, food supplements available to us anyway. So, Also, random, uh, it's 62 now. We're waiting for wave 62 in four days. I don't know what happened to the waves in between there. If you saw it as well, if you pay attention to when we actually won the wave, it does skip. It's not me skipping days on this occasion. I will try and keep you apprised of when I skip waves and why. Mostly because there's nothing happening interesting or it's just an easy wipe. Um, but yeah. At least the base is looking nice and clean now. At most point, we can get them robots doing their ting. Restrict them where needed to home to make sure that they clean up the mess within the home area from the kill box first because the kill box is technically within home I like a clean kill box so it is working butchering away at the humans the human corpses there it is giving us plenty of human meat obviously that's been auto cooked into fine meals with the automation there using the steel crates because they take up two squares but allow 
you to hold 32 stacks. So what that translates to is you've got two squares that are compressed down to th from 32 squares. So massive there in terms of gains. Technically the freezer doesn't need to be anywhere near that big, but I just like having a big freezer. You can see this human meat all over the place there. I can see at least 4,000 or so on the map. The droids are taking that away because I haven't set up a way of automating it yet. Oh, there you go. 9,000 actually. Human meat. Grid excess there showing 123,000. So we have 123,000 watts of electricity over what we need to run our things, which means our batteries and PPCs are going to fill up very quickly after each raid, which is exactly what we need, especially if we use those Marauders cannons. Turrets. Guns. Mm, that's on a postcard. Okay, so wave 62 coming in, only 100, but that's because they are, as I said, compressed now because we started getting into the 6, 7, and 800 wave numbers. So it's capped to 100 people for now. It will slowly be increased for by 20 or 25 uh, every 5 or 10 waves. Um, the stats, though, are silly. Very silly. If you actually click on any of these raiders, you will see they have a compressed raider as a stat. And within that stat, there is significant changes to everything that they have. You can also just tell by the way that they're attacking and how they're moving and it's, yeah, the weapons are improved, everything. As an example, they have many many buffs death refusal which means they resurrect when they killed the first time and compressed raider showing there that they have stats like 300 percent on movement hearing speed sight 100 percent increased armor on blunt so their armor stats their physical stats their ability to heal everything is increased massively along with their shooting capabilities and the speed their arrows now being shot out are like machine guns. Of course, I'm not too worried about the ability for the kill box because the lasers and the testers should still be able to handle them to a point. These guys that are loose within the base, though, are definitely more equipped and more dangerous than my guys. Luckily, our aero fleet farm that we had are being eradicated instead of my people at this time. But we managed to get there in the end, of course, the couple of people that got damaged, or damaged, injured throughout that at the beginning uh, can easily be fixed with one of your vampire's coagulation spell, quickly healing the bleeds and the ailments. Um, there was, of course, a lot of things finished there, research-wise, while we were doing so. Still some lingering about, and again, remember there. If you look there on the right hand side in the cemetery, they're alive again because they're basically resurrecting in there and they are so fast. Look at that guy's got no armor on at all, but look how fast they are. Crazy. We'll continue with these to go as we do. I may try and do like a last, like the last wave 98, 99, 100, 100 whatever it may be. Um, put back to normal so we can see how many people they send and how ridiculous they are in terms of raids as long as it doesn't lag out so it's unplayable or unshowable but yeah wave 62 there definitely definitely tough with the stats and they're only going to increase because as the points increase the stats increase the maximum they are allowed to have throughout their stats where you saw there was a 300% there uh, is a thousand percent across the board so they can be a thousand percent faster which means they'll be ten times quicker at running ten times better at seeing ten times better at hearing recovering etc etc in melee combat with them here shows that they are very very tough my droids or robots don't stand a chance but to be honest i'm not going to pull them back because they are distracting these guys from mine 
And of course, me coming in now with the gas rifles, uh, shooting, just as much chance of shooting your own people, to be honest. Uh, but we can send them in. No dramas. Good job. Skipping now to wave 63, so we can try this again. This one's a bit better because they've dropped outside. So instead of dropping it in our base, they are dropping into the kill box. You can see I've adjusted the kill box slightly because of the movement speed. The math does show that one line of moat and then one line of ground is the best way to go. Now at the minute that is packed dirt because packed dirt stops stuff from growing. It's not the best option though. Strangely, the best option that I will upgrade to shortly, I hope, is tilled soil. Tilled soil gives a movement speed of 80%. So it will be moat, tilled soil, moat, tilled soil, moat, tilled soil, all the way through. Now the moats are doing a fantastic job at slowing these guys down. They are, however, 400% movement speed, so four times faster, which means they are four times faster at getting through the moats. But you can see the Marauders are doing a serious amount of damage. That noise that you can hear in the background and see spamming on the top left of the screen is everybody is resurrected. So again, every time they are killed, they resurrect. So you have to kill everyone twice. So technically there's 200 here. Granted, when they resurrect, it's unlikely. No, it's not. It's definite that they won't have armor because they have the acidifiers. So they lose their armor, but they do not lose their compressed raider stats. So everybody's got to be killed twice, but we did a decent job there. I'm happy with that. Thrawn Pro drop. We get some legendary pets there. Delay next wave's also nice. Research boost is the one I'm going for though because I want to get the research done and dusted so the researchers can do other things. Four days to go. Remember, obviously, this is now four days and then at wave 70 it'll be three days, etc, etc. The idea is to make it harder and harder and harder even with the ridiculous defences that we've got that likely isn't going to change much, to be honest with you. The only change that is available to us now... Those Avengers turrets, by the way, are fantastic. Um, they certainly are better than your duplicate having their hand weapon. And they're reasonably cheap to run as well in terms of resources. Wave 64 coming in. Compressed again, 100. This time it's mechanoids. It's with mech hive. We've not seen the mechanoids in a while. They are waiting, so I'm going to just quickly jump ahead to when they actually attack. Uh, in the meantime, I'll do a couple of mortars, but usually you get about two, maybe three shots off with the mortars, which means it's they wait for one to one and a half minutes. Again, I really would like a way of stopping that, but at the minute I can't find one. So I'm going to get my guys to just do what they want to do for now to keep them happy, and then we'll come back when they actually assault. Here we go. We've also got, obviously, shredding mechanoids set up on an automation, though getting the actual mechanoids to the machine is a bit more difficult. You saw there actually a lot of damage was caused to my own guys. Both of them two below that left-hand marauder are now damaged or injured. And that is from the marauder itself. Also, again, you saw that right one actually hit my wall. So put them at the front, not the back. Or don't put people in between them and the turrets as well. The Teslas are vulnerable. They are very good. They use a lot of power, but they are devastating look at that broke straight through that shield and annihilated about five or six of those mechs immediately of course these will be collected into the cemetery and then shredded down for steel and pastel depending on how lucky you get yeah that the damage there is is too dangerous Ooh. That was close. Nearly lost the face. Lost their arms and the legs, but still got the face for now. As it stands, if we're using those marauders, it's probably best to just make sure that I set the defensive positions nowhere near them. Because you can see there, it's damaging the wall and the Tesla and the people. It's definitely not a safe place to stand. Though, as it stands, this wave looks like it's a winner. I'm not too worried. Nothing's going to happen. We've sent those guys to the hospital to get 
half of this house fixed up. The others are on them Avenger turrets, but them Avenger turrets are brilliant, actually. Um, but with the Marauders in place, as you just saw, when they actually fire, whatever's in that area just gets obliterated. And as long as you don't run out of power, you should be good. The Mechanoids are additionally struggling here because the Teslas, when they get into Tesla range, are stunned. The Teslas will stun the Mechanoids for a decent amount of time. Oh dear, the Marauders really are. Now, obviously, I've sorted out the sound for you. If you're playing and you use them, be warned, though, you want to turn down some sounds because they are very, very loud. Uh, I actually took my headphones off the first couple of times they fired because it caught me off guard. Just the Hive Queen coming in now with her androids. She doesn't stand much of a chance. She's obviously got this giant shield, but we expect that to get annihilated very quick. Her little minions coming in, but they stand no chance. I think the... Yeah, there you go. Shield's gone. That was the Marauder firing. And, yeah, it's over. GG. And we are actually way over time now anyway, so I am going to end the episode here. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like and comment. So welcome as always. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss any further episodes or games because I play many. Again, thank you for watching. Take care. Goodbye.